Graphically, our inverse function is the original function, but reflected across the y equals x line. So in the graph below, we're given the original function, which is the black line, and that's f of x. And the red dotted line is the y equals x line. Well, we already know from what we saw earlier that we take all the ordered pairs of our original function and we flip the x and y value. So since for f of x we have the ordered pair 1.41 comma 0, that means the inverse will have the ordered pair 0 comma 1.41. The original function has the ordered pair 2, 3, so the inverse has the ordered pair 3, 2. We have 3, 4, so the inverse is 4, 3. And 4, 5 means we have 5, 4. We also should see that any time that the original function crosses this y equals x line, that point will also exist on the inverse. For example, the point we have here that I just marked in green, we could guess that that would be about 1.8 comma 1.8, meaning that it's, if we flip those values, we'll get the same point, 1.8, 1.8. And that happens for any point that's on the y equals x line, because every point on that line, the x and y value are equal. They're the same. Well, so we can sketch this. We see between the two top points, the graph comes towards the red line. We then go away. We go towards and cross. We hit the, now the vertical intercept. We go off and probably shouldn't go in, out or in quite as severely. There we go. So the green line is now f inverse of x. So whenever graphing, we want to graph so that the original function is reflected across the y equals x line. This also means we can check to see whether it would actually have a function for the inverse. So looking at the black line, we already know that this is a function from the vertical line test. We can run this vertical line anywhere across the black function f of x, and it will only cross it once. We can also run it across the green function f inverse of x. And again, we also only cross it once. So our inverse is a function. But the way you can check to see if the inverse is going to be a function before you even get to graphing it is you can use what's called the horizontal line test. Take a horizontal line and run it along your original function, the black function in this case. If it only crosses the function once, then the inverse does exist and it will be a function. But let's look at an example. Say you had the graph y equals x squared. Or f of x equals x squared. Well, we already know that the inverse won't exist, and we can imagine that if we reflected it across the y equals x line, that would happen. But let's look. Clearly, our red parabola passes the vertical line test. It does not, however, pass the horizontal line test. For we see that there are points where this horizontal line intersects the graph twice. And in fact, what we see is that the inverse will look something like this. So our green parabola is now f inverse of x. And that is, in fact, not a function. That's the horizontal line test.